Luis, how are you? Good, good. Should I start? Yeah, go for it. If you want to share right. whatever you want to do. Yep. Let's share my window. See if it works. Wonderful. All right. Um, can you see the full slide? Yep. OK, perfect. Hey, um, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Lewis. I'm product manager at Vertex. I run Gemini's uh, API stuff. Um, so I think the, the Minicom is so well-timed uh, because we just have a wonderful Google I.O. yesterday. Um, we released a bunch of new things. Um, so I will try to use a little bit of time at the end um, to kind of give you a quick recap of what's happening yesterday um, with regarding to agents. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit on, on agent builder, um, the way we think about agent, um, the ATK stuff, uh, agent development kits. Um, we also have a runtime engine called agent engine. Um, and then a set of uh, samples that we provide in the agent garden. Um, so I think a Gentic, um application is it's really, really uh, interesting these days. Um, so as a developer, if I call like a model multiple times, right, I chain them together, I can call this a Gentic workflow or a Gentic application. Uh, but at Google, when we think about how to build a platform for agent, we need to be more precise, right, about what agent is. So um, I'd like to kind of walk you through quickly about how we got here, like today, and then we give you like our definition of uh, agents. Uh, so back in 2022, I started uh, the projects at Google. That's actually three months before ChatGPT launched. Um, at that time, we the, the only thing we basically focus is like prompting. Right, like we 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 literally say prompting is a is a piece of arts because um, the model at that time is not great at understanding like all the nuances in, in the prompts, right? So you have to kind of iterate. Um, we quickly passed that, right? The model being able to uh, follow instruction, understanding language a lot better. We see, hey, um, the model is not able to get real time information or you know additional information. So that's where RAC come in, uh, retrieval argument and generation. And with this, um, you know, people kind of say, hey, the model is able to do a lot more because um, you know it's not bounded by the the knowledge that trained uh, embedded into the model, right? But it can actually get real world data. Um, but quickly, people realize. Um, not that is not enough, right? We want the model to be able to monitor, to observe, and to act upon users' requests, right? So that's where function calling come in, and or you call this tools. Uh, so we give model these set of tools um, to to act on behalf of the user. And then um, another kind of a big development in the in the uh, kind of the ecosystem is the reasoning capability of the model, right? So that happened about a year and a year and a half ago. Where we start seeing, um, you know, we we starting people trying to start fulfilling the original vision about LLMs, where these models can start reasoning and planning, right? And with a super powerful brain um, to plan, like you know, what you want to want the agent to do, uh, we kind of have this uh, agent systems. And today, um, you know, most of the stuff, most of the time, we, we talk about multi-agent system because we we think this is a pretty good balance between you know having something very specialized, right, not derail from its original tasks, but also um, doing something very complicated and complex, right, uh, so that you have multiple agents. Each one of the agent can um, can uh, basically target it, specialize one one thing. Um, so this actually brings to you know our definition of uh, what the agent is. Uh, we believe there are three key components. Uh, the first one, of course, is the model, right? So that's sort of the enabler of a lot of the things that we talk about today. Uh, the model needs to be able to reason, right? And then determine a good plan and generating responses. Um, a set of tools. Um, you know, we talk about function calling, we're talking about, you know, using search, we're talking about, you know, um, being able to access files, right? So these tools allow model to interact with the real world and the environment that we have. Uh, lastly is the orchestration. I think this is actually one of the things um, that I see being overlooked uh, a lot, right? Because um, people kind of uh, concentrate more on uh, what complex task these agencies can do. Uh, but in reality, um, when we see a lot of people trying to deploy this into production, it's really hard, right? Like making something on the laptop, you know, 
for one user, it's uh, relatively simple. But how can you scale this to hundred thousands, uh, millions of users? And then you're able to have the right security, privacy, right? Being able to do authentication, right? Being able to debugging things very effectively. That's getting extremely difficult. Um, so that's sort of at, at Google Vertex, we are trying to deliver an enterprise ready agent platform that can power uh, real world use cases. Um, I think one of the one of the philosophies uh, that we have is we want to be for these type of you know tools. We want to um, you know dog food them before releasing to broader audience. Um, that's why you know either from yesterday a lot of the demos that you saw from Google I/O or a month ago on Google Cloud Next. Many of those things are actually built on top of the exact platform and uh, the framework. So we've been able to, you know, battle test these things before, you know, um, giving these to developers. Um, so the first thing we're going to probably talk about is the agent uh, um, development kits, ADK. It is a programmatic framework for developers to define tests and uh, iterate multi-agent systems. Um, the, the beauty of this is, of course, it's uh, it's a fully open source, right? Everybody can go and just use it um, through the GitHub. Uh, you can also contribute back to the through the code base if you want. Um, this whole thing is built for multi-agent um, because we we do believe this is kind of the right moment to invest in this. And as I said earlier, it's a great balance between you know um, having these systems to target on very complex use cases. Um, we also built a, a very intuitive uh, local development UI for fast iteration. You can actually um, just spin up this UI and then, you know, seeing uh, how each one of the agents getting triggered. You can trace the, the entire thing um, to, to basically doing debugging to improve your systems. Um, the other thing uh, very interesting is, you know, we often say LLMs are not so reliable because, you know, it's basically... Um, um, problematic, uh, like a probability machine, right? Um, um, with some of the noises um, and then uh, the random seed, um, it doesn't actually give you uh, very deterministic behavior. But with the uh, agent development framework, we know for many use cases, people want to have deterministic logic, right? You don't want users to experience different things when, when the user interact uh, with the system. So we actually have this uh, designed um, into the ADK, so a developer have a lot more controls to have this type of a hybrid agents. Um, also, when we are designing the, the framework, uh, we support long running operations. Um, also, we support human loop, right, for some of the, the kind of a high critical use cases. Uh, it's very easy to kind of still have a human, right, um, to kind of approve or orchestrate some of the, the critical use cases. Um, Gemini, of course, uh, is uh, native supported uh, in the ADK. Um, but when we build ADK, uh, this is really model on agnostic. Um, it's not actually tied to Google model or Google ecosystem. You could use it with OpenAI, with Entropic, or you know, model of your choice. Um, lastly, uh, you know, uh, we trying to uh, support uh, MCP. Right. Uh, we are also adding the agent to agent uh, A2A protocols uh, to be native support through ADK. Um, so the uh, when we're designing ADK, right, like, again, there are a lot of uh, new developers we call like app developers coming into, you know, building agents in addition to we traditionally we say those are AI developers. Um, so that's why, you know, when we looking at how to um, abstract the the the, uh, the framework, we need to strike a balance between how easy it is for people to get started uh, versus, you know, the super, super expert want to go to very simple, like very um, kind of granular details of fine tuning things. Right. So um, to start, we have this minimum uh, boilerplate code. Um, you can just say, you know, my my a I'm creating a flight agent. All right. And then this flight agent have access to, you know, two different tools. And then when you do a uh, multi-agent system, right, you just say sub-agent and can specify a few more agents that you're, you're having so you can actually plan your entire travel. Okay, so this is this is like how easy it is uh, that you can start uh, building these type of uh, multi-agents. Uh, so next, I'm going to uh, talk about the, the agent engine. 
Um, I sort of, uh, this is the thing that I talked about earlier. Uh, building agents is actually not super hard, right? It just require you to um, um, put your hand on the keyboard, do some prompting, right? And then use some of the framework to, to kind of build something uh, that works end to end. Um, but once you are comfortable with, um, you know, the flow, um, you basically want to put this agent uh, into into production, and then you know supporting you know more than one users, right? Ten thousands of users. Um, so the agent engine is actually the runtime for running these uh, ADK code in cloud, right? Um, so you don't actually have to to care about how to provision the runtime. You know, we also offering the the context management sessions, memories, examples on the cloud. So you can kind of start maintaining states, uh, stateful states um, through different uh, you know conversations, right? You can have unlimited um, kind of a conversational history, um, and then kind of saved, right? For for these uh, interaction with the users, um, the agent garden uh, is a is a really nice way for people to get started. Um, so we we have a lot of uh, samples in the agent garden. If you uh, log into Vertex AI. Uh, you're going to see these examples to help you quickly get started. You can open it up, right, clone it, and, uh, you know, customize it um, to your, your own use cases. So um, getting to some of the things that we uh, announced yesterday, uh, the new stuff just coming. I uh, actually sneak in uh, slides for uh, Gemini 2.5 um, because, as I said earlier, the model is actually the brain of the, the agentic systems, right? Um, for 2.5 Pro, um, we, we got really, really good back, uh, feedback previously about the reasoning capability. Uh, we are planning to do another update in coming weeks. And we also announced a new uh, 2.5 Pro variant called DeepThink. Um, it basically fire parallel thinking process and being able to kind of aggregate different thoughts uh, together. This is like how people brainstorming things. We see uh, very, very good results. Uh, this is still in the early testing with some safety uh, safety testers. Uh, we dropped another 2.5 flash model yesterday uh, as a preview. Again, this is going to be the workhorse model uh, for you to do, you know, function calling. We also have um, a lot of improvements in terms of uh, reasoning, long context, um, et cetera. Uh, on the agent stuff, um, you know, the a ADK, um, Python version uh, move into uh, the first stable version, uh, VD 1.0. Uh, that means it's production ready. Um, so what are um, what you have been building and using, right? Uh, you could just upgrade your uh, ADK, making sure everything compiles. It should, um, and then you're you're ready to go. Uh, we also drop the the Java ADK, um, kind of the first version, um, so that the the Java developers can build on top of the, this awesome framework. The agent, uh, the agent engine also get a facelift. Uh, we um, actually improve a lot on the UI, uh, so you can actually monitor the whole agent life cycle in a more straightforward way. Uh, you can see kind of the um, the screenshot on the right hand side. We give you all the dashboarding, uh, being able to trace, being able to debug, um, and then see you know how long each steps take. Right, that give you a really good view of you know how you. Uh, going to further improve your your agents again you know you could actually develop the whole thing on your laptop and then you can seamlessly bring the whole uh, code base uh, the agent that you build run within cloud and then get all these additional features um so lastly uh we we getting we are adding new agents samples into the agent garden um we have three new python agents you know financial advisors or there's also uh, academic research uh, we have two uh, Java agents being added there. Um, one interesting thing um, is that uh, because you know these days the, the LLM is just so powerful, um, you know you could literally just ask the LLM to look at one of the samples, right, and say, "Hey, uh, expand this," and then to 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 a totally different use case, right? Like for example, or if you're writing in Java, you don't have see the actual uh, one you want in the same language. We just ask the LLM to say, "Hey, convert everything right into Java or some other languages." Um, will you will get you uh, kind of a quick start there? 
Uh, I think with that, uh, that's all. Oh, well, one more, one more thing. So um, the A to A agent to agent uh, protocol. Um, so we also drop a, a, a kind of a small improvement. It's more lightweight and secure. Uh, we're so happy with um, seeing like all the ecosystem and community kind of start uh, adopting this protocol. Um, we're bringing more partners uh, into this ecosystem so everybody can build on top of it. Uh, it will be very uh, seamless integration with uh, a more richer uh, ecosystem for, for this protocol. And for ADK, um, we're trying to uh, build this in, in, uh, natively uh, into that and it's coming soon. Uh, I guess uh, with that, that's everything I want to cover. Thank you. Luis, thank you. Right on time. Uh, there's other agents that Luis didn't cover that I saw yesterday that are pretty impressive. Uh, go check it out. They're probably in the agent garden and, and flash also is super fast if you want to power agents and so on. All right. Thank you.